Hey, what is up guys and welcome back. So today we're going to be taking a look at my Zod Dart XL build. I still haven't flown it yet. I'm waiting for the weather to clear up. However, I've been taking my time building this thing and choosing the components that I'm going to be using as well as designing some 3D printed parts, which I'll have for you guys at Thingiverse. So let's take a look at what I've done here. And again, I still haven't flown it. Can't wait till I actually fly this. Let's start with the front. Now with the front, I use two run cam cameras. I use the run cam 3S because the GoPro will not fit. Yes, the GoPro will not fit. They've made it exactly. I mean, you can get it to fit, but out of the box, uh, it's it's made for a run cam 3S basically. And also the old style Mobius, not the new ones, the older Mobius here. They do give you this little extra foam piece here. And in the front also over there, I use the run cam Eagle 2 Pro because I find it to have the best image quality that I've seen in an FPV camera. And that is the reason why I put it here because I really want this to be a proper setup. And if you take a look here, I routed the wires all the way up. And this is really nice because Zod Dart or Zod actually has this little engraving here on the side. So you can route your wires through there and keep it really nice and neat. However, you're gonna ex you have to extend them quite a long way because uh, to go all the way back here is, is, a, is a pretty long distance. Now, let's take a look at the flight controller and some of the other things that I've designed here. Now, for fi flight control, I use the Matek F405 wing. I don't use anything other than Matek for my wings from now on. They just perform spectacular. Even when I, I had a short a couple times after a couple crashes, the thing is still running beautifully. So they do have some inbuilt protection. They're using premium components. This is why I always reach out to Matek uh, for a wing flight controller. However, I haven't tried anything else, but currently this is what I'm sticking to because so far I have, I think, four builds or three builds, four builds with uh, Maytag here. So yeah, that's what I used for uh, the Zod Dart here. I'm also using the new Infinite DVR VTX from AKK with a DVR. Can you tell it's 1000 milliwatt VTX with DVR functionality, MMCX. It's a really nice, sick beast. I'll have a link down below. I haven't used it just yet. And as you can tell, it does come with a microphone but we will be seeing it very soon on the channel. And again, the Maytek here has a nine volt regulator on board, so that'll keep this baby absolutely clean if we end up do running through some noise. However, if you take a look at the Zod's ESC, they're running two low ESR Rubicon capacitors right into it. It's a pretty massive 30 amp ESC here. And for motor, they're using a low KV, but it's a pretty large motor. They're using a 22, 16, 1300 KV motor here, as you can tell. Uh, it feels really nice. I don't know how it's gonna perform, but. As I've seen on YouTube, everyone's enjoying it, so I'm guessing I'm going to enjoy it as well. Now, I didn't want to take this out and made it with no flight controller because this one does not come, unfortunately, it does not come with inbuilt stabilizer like the Zod Orbit or the Zod Dart, the little one, or the Zod uh, Nano Talon. Uh, they, those came with the inbuilt stabilizers like, like mini flight controls. They were really good. This one doesn't come with anything, so it just comes with the ESC motors and the servos that are on the wings and obviously the servo connectors. Now, if you also take a look here, the servo connectors are actually... They connect through here, which is really, really cool. They, they break them out into, you know, like the servo type connectors and um, they break them into the wing here. And then the wing, what you do is it breaks out two female s servo connectors. So you can even install something else other than the current servo uh, on one of your wings if you wanted to and you don't have to worry about a wire going through. So that is a huge plus, but I chose not to put anything on the wings. I just wanted everything to be in the fuselage and to figure out a really nice way to route it. Now, as you can tell here, the VTX is just hanging here like an idiot. And the reason for that is there's a couple reasons here. One is I can't put it on top of the flight controller. And why is that? I, I totally get away with it. But the reason is that there's a little screw that goes in to hold one of the wings and I won't be able to screw that in or take it out. So that's one reason why I couldn't do that here. And also, I couldn't make another mount in this area because I also have the, the bar that's going to go through here, through the wings. Uh, so yeah, I couldn't do that there. So what I've decided, I'll actually give it a lot of thought. Um, I made this little piece here and it takes the exact, you know, uh, angle of the, 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 the fuselage or the cockpit or whatever the hell you want to call it. And um, what you do is you just bring it in. And you can just slide it to wherever you want after you plug everything in and that'll hold in really really good and also another advantage of having the vtx here for me is i could easily remove and add the sd card but not everybody's gonna have the same or or is going to use the same vtx as me 
However, there is something that we all share in common. This thing needs to be uh, cooled down as much as possible. So when you stick it here, when you put the VTX here, you can put it in any angle you want after you have everything connected. So you can figure out how you want it, how low you want it. You could even, you know, hot glue this into place if you wanted to. However, I don't recommend doing that because then again, it'll be very difficult for you to get to those uh, screws that are going to go right there. And if we take a look here, if we bring in the top and we close up the hatch, and uh, we have to actually drop this down a little bit more on an angle. There we go. And we close the hatch here. What you can see is the airflow is going to go through here and touch the VTX, thus cooling the VTX down, which is something I also really need since this is broadcasting or it can go up to 1000 milliwatts. So it's going to get pretty toasty. However, PLA is going to possibly start warping uh, like it did with my run cam split 2S. However, that one I accidentally ripped the cable in a crash and I contacted run cam and they said they would send me an extra two, which was really nice, free of charge. I was looking actually to purchase it, and they said, we'll send it to you free of charge. I was like, oh, wow, great, thank you. They sent me two, which is, that's something really nice. So that means run cam support is absolutely phenomenal. Now, if we take a look at the receiver that I'm using, I'm using the R9 mini receiver, and we'll get into the iNav connections in a bit here. Now, I'm using the FR Sky R9 mini receiver because I got that bundle that comes with three receivers, and uh, I'm using it here, and it comes with those nice Immortal T antennas. However, if you take a look here, I didn't use them. And you might say, well, why the hell didn't you use them? Well, because these are the maiden flights, and maiden flights, things don't always go very well. So I, 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 could, I don't mind ripping this one. Um, and then the other one I'll leave for another day. It's those really expensive antennas. So uh, that's the reason why I'm just using the default one, the little tiny one, as you can tell here. So it's just split like this. I just taped it with some uh, duct tape here. Now, if we take a look at the GPS. Now, GPS is I'm only going for Maytag uh, you, when I could afford them because I find Maytag it to be the best GPS. I've used a couple of them and uh, I never even knew the lock issue ever existed where you have to wait like five minutes for for the gps to take lock with these when i when i first started with the maytek gps's and as soon as i booted up and i just put my goggles on i already have all the locks so i never really had an issue with that until i used an hglrc cheap one the other day because i ran out of maytek gps's and i had to wait for this to arrive and um yeah just maytek gps's so i've designed this little 3d printed part if you take a look here I didn't want to use a lot of glue and I didn't want to cut out too much. This is just fine for me. We can tell I've designed these little legs that'll just fit in. You can just add a little bit of glue and that'll hold it into place just fine. This way we don't really make a lot of cosmetic damage to the, 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 the plane here. And to make these holes, I just got a little tweezer and I just started poking through to prepare the holes for it. And it holds pretty well even though... Uh, even without glue, but I, I don't recommend you fly this without glue. That'll just fly off. And I cut a little bit of the mesh grill so I can pipe out the wire for the GPS. Anyways, the wire for the GPS is hidden behind something. Anyways, but I do bring out the wire through here. Made it, make sure it's long enough. And that's why I kept also these openings so you can just stick it through right here. Now, the SMA for the VTX antenna was kind of tricky here. Now, what I had to do is find a right angle MMCX. If any VTX company is actually watching this right now, uh, any company that's planning on putting MMCX ports on their VTX, please provide us with a 90 degree angle uh, wire here because it, the, the straight one, I don't see a use for it. It's almost impossible to have it useful for, for the, most of the things we use, especially for quadcopters. To have one sticking out like that, it's just not good. And a right angle always works just about every time. They're just more compatible. So these are, I, I would recommend these the most. So I'm planning on picking up a couple because I usually tend to break them in crashes. But anyways, let's take a look at the VTX here. So as you can tell, what I've done is I've done the same concept as that, but I made them longer. And they're going to just slide right in. Uh, obviously, first I started poking the holes with these after I, I just, you know, engraved, you know, the size. And then I just started making them deeper. And obviously, this is going to be glued in. And uh, the reason why I chose these two locations, one is that they're close. Two, there's a lot of foam here. So there, you, you don't reduce the structural integ integrity as much with making these little small holes on these. As you can tell, it's pretty thick foam right here. That is, it's, it's a pretty thick foam, basically. And even, this is even thicker. Check this out. All of that foam, that's just all foam in there. So we don't really reduce the structural integrity as much. And especially in a crash, when you crash and you take a look at the overall plane here while it's built, uh, it's it's just look it looks like the antenna is not going to take much damage 
neither is the GPS because they're just so packed in. Don't forget your wings, you have these little uh, vertical stabilizers in a way that pop out and they're really protecting. So if you flip over, uh, I don't think I'll be ripping this anytime soon. So that's something uh, that was really nice. It's just uh, overall, I think it, it came out really well. I still don't know how the hell it's going to fly. And to be honest, I can't wait to see it fly. So let's take a look at what I've done with the wiring part. Now, if we take a look in here, we do have the Zod ESC. It's a 30 amp 4S ESC or possibly even more. It's a 4, 4S ESC, 2 to a 4S. So don't use anything more than a 4S. And if we take even a closer look here, we can see two Rubicon low ASR capacitors sticking out. That is a huge plus. So that this is a very well thought out ESC. And I think this is acting as a heat sink and at the same time as a heat shrink. And uh, for motors, they're using a low KV, 1300 KV, 2216 motor here. I don't know how well this performs, but obviously we'll see in the field. But seeing everybody else's video it's a really nice cruiser and this is what it seems like and this is what i want i don't want anything to go fast i want really long distance and i just want uh very efficient i like efficiency with planes more than speed i mean i got quadcopters that ha just go super fast and i just want something that just i could just cruise around do some long range stuff with so let's take a look at the matic so for for flight control I use the matic f405 wing now, so far I have four builds with Matek flight controllers, and it's the only thing I'm reaching out for because I just they're just really reliable. The other day I had a really hard crash with my Zod Orbit, and I had a short circuit, and the, the thing just kept shutting off. Uh, it, was, it was my fault, obviously, but after I figured out where the short circuit and removed it, the whole thing still works absolutely phenomenal. I fixed it even in the field, which was... Um, it just says a lot about Matex parts. They're using premium components, the little ICs, everything is using premium. So it's just peace of mind that you just know every time you plug it in, it's going to work. Even if you make a, maybe a, a possible small slight fuck up, you're still going to be good to go. Sorry about my language. All right. So, so first I'm going to remove the top shell of the Matex F405 here. And I'm doing it with my awesome screwdriver, which is uh, fully automatic or semi-automatic possibly. I think that's the word. Let's go ahead and just do that. As you can tell, this this is this is where these uh, little screwdrivers come in absolutely handy. I freaking love this. It's always next to me. It's the only thing I'm reaching out for. It doesn't have much torque on the on the uh, electrical side, but it does have a really good locking mechanism that allow you to torque it manually to however the hell you much you wanted it. But it, it'll it'll torque pretty decent. But not as, as much as your hand, obviously. All right, so let's take a closer look here. So as you can tell here, I've added the servo headers for the servos. And the reason you see some of them are cut off is because I didn't really think it through. And as I told you, there's a little screw that's going to go in here. And that was always catching on the extra servos. However, I don't need more than two servos for this for this uh, airplane. Nobody really needs more than two servos unless you have some, you know, uh, gimbal setup or some kind of, you know, like a pan and tilt system. But then I'd highly recommend you just solder the wires. I wish I would have soldered the wires directly instead and just put two pin headers and then left the others if I needed them just to solder on. I just got too lazy to desolder everything, so I just started cutting them off. And that's why you only see... Uh, two here. So take that into consideration. And the way that I mounted this, obviously it's not straight. You can tell the arrows right there. So I'm going to have to put a 270 degree yaw offset, I, I believe. Yeah, I think it's 270 degree yaw offset before I fly or it'll never fly basically. And uh, what I did to line it up perfectly is if you just drop it on the piece of wood here, like the whole flight controller, and you move it forward, the two screws will hit these two holes because it has a 30 by 30 uh, mounting hole. So it would hit those two, two screws. So what I did instead, I took out the flight controller, added a couple pieces of super, not super glue, I just added some hot glue on the bottom, put it in close, and then just pushed it until I felt both of the screws catch on the edge of the wood where the holes are for the uh, 30 by 30 stack, as you can tell those, like, those right there it's a little bit hard to see but they're on the bottom here so that's what i did here make sure i got it as straight as possible and then it should be good from there basically and uh, if we take a closer look here this is where the esc is going the esc power now it, do, it did come with a very long nice xt60 that just went all the way to the front here and what i did was i just repurposed it i just cut it to exactly where i wanted here for the esc plug the esc into place and then the other side of the xt60 which is this here is connected to the battery input which is right there and the signal for the ESCs they come with a red white and black make sure you never connect the red 
uh, because that's 5 volt and this isn't this shouldn't go anywhere especially if you're doing some kind of setup like this and once you cut it all also cover it with something so it doesn't touch anything and short out this is the red wire 5 volt coming from the ESC here white is the signal so it would go to s1 which would be like right there and the black wire is the ground I just grounded it there now if we take a closer look the VTX is connected over here at this at this edge right there uh, you'll see VTX ground 9 volt on the bottom right there and on the other side is the camera and if you could tell the camera wires are going uh, like I showed you in the beginning and then they catch on this wall and they go all the way down that way to the camera. Now for the GPS, what I've done is I've set it up on UART 6. For some reason, I just like setting it up on UART 6. I just have good luck with that. Um, I mean, the, the, the plane usually flies really great when I do that. It has nothing to do with it, but it's just something that I do now. So I set it up on UART 6 right there. As you can tell, this is for the GPS. Here's the connector. And this, this came with the GPS connector. It's really long and that's really great. And they are silicone wires. So Matek is just, you know, Matek is premium stuff. Um, I, I don't even think I have to tell you that. Most of you probably already know this. And uh, what else did I do? I think that's it. It was a really simple build. It was absolutely simple. What took long is just designing the parts for the 3D, um, for uh, just designing the 3D printed parts for this setup. Uh, overall, it was just really easy. Oh yeah, and receiver. Where does the receiver go? Uh, here's the R9 mini receiver, which is on the top hatch here. It's taped right there. And uh, it's going to these uh, servo type connectors. And the reason why I did that, it goes right there. And the reason why I did that is because I'm going to be testing different receivers and this makes it really easy for me to replace. So that's why I did that for the receiver here. And it's easier to bind too. I just, boop, just plug that in and I can bind it also. And as you can tell from the sides here, we have two servo connectors and as well as this side, we have two servo connectors. And you might say, well, why the hell is that? Well, you only have one servo on each wing and the wing, when it connects, it connects to this connector as well as, you know, the rod and the screw here. And when it connects here, you can also output, if you wanted to, uh, or input another whatever servo type, anything you wanted to input in here, you can also do that through there. So they gave you a little extra auxiliary input for something if you wanted to use it, if you wanted to route something through the wing. And the wing has some really nice grooves so you to mount whatever you want. And But I chose to have everything in the fuselage. It's a lot easier and uh, it's just a lot quicker and I think it was just a lot cleaner to be honest. I don't want anything on the wings. So let me know what you guys think down in the comment section and I'll see you in the next one. Next one, we'll be taking this guy out, flying him, testing out the INAV settings. And on the Maiden, I'll give you guys my uh, my PIDs and everything for this uh, whole build here. And my INAV auto launch settings and just everything else. So, yeah, if you're interested in that, just stay tuned. And that'll be upcoming very soon after the, sun, uh, after the snow goes away. And, well, I'll link everything down below. Please check them out. It was a great support channel. And I'll see you in the next one. Peace out.